Ah, uh, this is a foreigner in the Philippines. Well, uh, Beth and I live, uh, well, our family, we live in Bohol. And depending on where you're watching this now, if you're in America or you're in the UK, uh, and you have anybody here in Bohol, you may be uh, you may be a little bit worried. Or you may not be worried at all, because possibly this is such a tiny little place that uh, who's really interested in what's going on here? But we're interested in what's going on here, because when we go to uh, McDonald's, we actually drive through a place called, uh, let me see, Inabanga. And Inabanga, uh, Imber Hall, has been in the news of late. Now, it may even still be going on right now, but uh, I think it has finished. But there was a firefight there. And the news that we got was that along the river there, uh, the, uh, the locals noticed that there were some um, what they call pump boats, um, and there were three, uh, and that the uh, they were obvious, they were uh, inhabited or crewed by some strangers and strange looking, and then people saw some weapons, and apparently there were some quite modern weapons being not quite modern, modern, modern assault weapons were being carried. Now prior. Prior to this, coincidentally, the U.S. Uh, government has sent out a warning about uh, for U.S. citizens to exercise extreme caution about their safety. And this is because they had uh, an unconfirmed, but um, what they've said is a worthy uh, source, have said that ISIS or some other of the um, these terrorist groups that are operating in this area uh, have decided to go on a campaign of kidnapping Americans and holding them for ransom. Well, if they don't get paid, then uh, it's not a good story. It's not a good end to the story, and uh, and so that's uh, that's gone out and been and caused uh, a little bit of a stir. So. It brings up the whole thing about how safe are we. Well, the one thing that uh, I see all the time is that because I don't actually see many foreigners, I, I actually, unless I go to, um, to not to be gone, Tagbilaran, when I do my visa, I, I really don't see many foreigners. I, I know some. But unless I make an effort to go and, and visit them, I don't actually bump into foreigners. Uh, in fact, if, if there's a foreigner um, walking or driving or something, Beth will actually say, oh, look, there's a foreigner. So <laughs> that gives you an idea of how, um, how common they are around here or uncommon. Now, the other thing is, of course, uh, and this may, may be a perhaps a part of the risk of being a foreigner here is that everybody knows you. When I go into Taliban, um, I really don't know many people. Um, I'm friendly to everyone and everybody's extremely friendly to me. And I see people that I see all the time and I recognize them. I don't know their name, but I recognize them and they smile recognition. But I don't actually know their name. And if I see them not in that familiar uh, position, for instance, if, if it's one of the girls that always serves me if I go to the Altoras cafeteria, uh, I, know, I know the faces of the girls there very well and, and always smile and say hello as if I know them. Uh, but if I see them in the street, I might say, Why, where do I know that girl? person from and they know me why do they know me because I'm one of just a handful of foreigners this can be this can present its own risks obviously uh, because everybody knows pretty well where you live and uh, sometimes people don't really like that <laughs> I'll give you a good example we we were driving home 
and uh, it was raining and there was a guy on a motorcycle with a delivery box marked LBC. Now LBC is the is our uh, our what delivery service of choice because they're good, they're careful, they text us when they have something usually they don't try and they used to try and deliver it but they delivered it to the wrong person and um, we didn't like that we preferred to have it delivered to us or they just text us and we go and pick it up well here's the uh, <laughs> here's how it works when you're a foreigner here is we were driving along um, and I see this we're driving behind this motorcycle and it's raining uh, and when it's raining it can be pretty wretched on a motorcycle uh, and he'd slowed down and um, we overtook him well we've overtook him and 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 I jokingly said to Balalut who was with me I said oh, maybe that maybe that uh, guy is delivering for us well we after we've overtaken him we're driving along and I've forgotten all about it when suddenly he pulls up alongside us uh, and looks over at me uh, and calls my name uh, Terence Martin that's my ID name uh, Flannery I use for my professional work of uh, YouTube Facebook uh, my writing is all in my original family name so uh, thing I have to show ID to get anything either money or my uh, parcels so things have to be delivered in Terence Martin and he looks over and says, Terence Martin. And I said, well, yes, actually. So we pull over and I show him my ID uh, and he gives me a parcel. Now, that's going between uh, Taliban and where we live, uh, closer towards Atafi. It's actually called Borgas. And, and he looks over and it's a foreigner. I'm a foreigner, so he takes a, a stab at it and says, Are you Terence Martin? And yeah, sure enough, I am. So people actually know me, and they know all of the other foreigners, and it doesn't take long to get a reputation for how you are, whether you're polite, whether you're otherwise. And we've talked about that on another video. So safety is affected by that and it, it must be but do we feel safe under normal just every day going in shopping talking to people uh, do we feel safe or endangered or threatened not at all so when i hear about uh, what happened um, it's difficult for me to start going around getting all worried about it now in the end your safety is something which it it starts off somewhere in in a quite profound way why why does it happen to one person when it doesn't happen to the next one um if several foreigners are in a restaurant and one one of them walks out the door and gets gets arrested or or captured or kidnapped why him why didn't they wait for a smaller one to come out or why didn't they what was it that made him the the candidate for that particular experience and we watched a while ago we watched somebody being kidnapped um, uh, they were kidnapped uh, in the evening so after dark and they're walking along and they were walking along a bridge in the little clip that we saw and they they get pushed around and these people who who do the kidnapping are heavily armed you know you're not going to say no I'm not going no I don't want to be kidnapped today thank you uh, no that doesn't quite work um, so what is it what why does one person have that happen to them why does one person I mean I've been stung I've been stung by a bee um, and it hurts for a little while and then I look down and put my uh, latest prescription glasses on and I see that the sting is still in there so 
I pluck it out, and the next day I can't feel anything. Somebody else gets stung by a bee, um, uh, and suddenly his whole arm is swollen up for a week or something. Well, what's the difference? Um, I'm sure that it's something actually much more profound than we would like to think. So, am I going to go out tomorrow and get kidnapped? I don't know. Am I going to go out tomorrow and get run over? I don't know. Am I going to come out tomorrow, have a meal and get food poisoning? I have no idea. Am I going to walk in the grass like my brother-in-law Manorado did and get uh, stung, not stung, bitten by a snake? I don't know. And if I do get bitten by a snake, look at what happened to Manorado. I... I photographed the the bite that he received and and you could clearly see two puncture marks as if as if the the snake's fangs had gone like this you could st you could actually see them and they were about five eighths apart so a fair sized snake now then one of our subscribers said I just I just googled this and apparently it would uh, appear that only fanged snakes actually inject venom. So those poisonous snakes are the ones that attack with, with, uh, with the, f the fangs at the front. And that's what they're there for. They're there for, they're hollow, and they're there for injecting venom. Well, why, why did someone else get attacked by a snake and die and why did Manorado just get down kiss the ground <laughs> this is actually what he did he, he kissed the ground that had that had borne the snake to him in an old uh, superstition or folklore or Filipino cultural way he went to see a faith healer the faith healer did some um, some uh, incantations on him somebody said one of our subscribers um, who is not uh, into the Filipino culture said I know what those words are there's two words mumbo and jumbo <laughs> okay so okay <laughs> thanks for that one so why did the mumbo and jumbo work on Manorado when if it had been me I might have died Someone once a little while ago actually said to me, so you live two miles up in the mountains and it's a, it's a rough ride to get down uh, and you're on a motorcycle. This is before we had a truck. Uh, so in other words, um, hate to break this news to you, but if you get bitten by a, um, a snake that's really venomous, you're going to die. Thank you very much for that one, sir. I, I went to bed and slept very soundly after that, of course. So, what is it that makes one person get themselves into terrible trouble and, in some cases, die a terrible death? And that would be an interesting answer if I could see that answer. So, we are planning... Beth and I are planning to take a break. We've been working 24-7 for uh, about five months now, um, as you know, if you've been following us. Uh, and we're going to take a break. We're going to take a break from, um, from actually uh, going out and building houses or overseeing it and, and all of that, uh, helping people to hospital and, uh, and all of that, which is, which is incredibly time-consuming and quite stressful. And we're going to have a break, and we're going to we're going to go and see our friend Joy in Dumaketi, and we're hoping to meet a few other expats. Uh, some have already uh, contacted us, and, and we've already contacted uh, some others that are out on Duma, uh, and we'll we'll uh, socialise and uh, you know network, but but not any stressful stuff, and we'll go around and and have a look at stuff. Well, the warning from the U.S. is that the targets for taking 
um, American citizens is in places of entertainment where they uh, are, I guess, laid back, maybe even had a few drinks, uh, low resistance, and and that's where they'll, well, if it's a bar, I mean, if you were in Anglis and you wanted to meet a foreigner, you go to a bar. <laughs> that's, where, that's where they are. Um, not all of them, of course, but uh, you understand what I'm saying. So that's what these terrorists do if they're going to target Americans or any other foreigner. I've got to tell you this, if you're, if you're white and you're here, you're American. I mean, whether you're American or not, what's that got to do with it? To a Filipino, you're American. And usually it's a fairly safe bet. So they're there to kidnap if they're on that little thing. And I guess if you are close to water, that, you know, like a, a beach resort or something like that, maybe that is even a little bit riskier than normal. Is it risky going up to our little place in the mountains where there's so little going on? Am I going to die? Am I going to get run over? Am I going to get food poisoning? Am I, is somebody going to put the hex on me? Is somebody going to put a spell on me? Am I going to get bitten by a snake or stung by a bee? How do I know? Which... My So maybe my challenge is when I get up in the morning now, I'll feel safe in my bed tonight. Everything's very quiet. Even the dogs, you may have noticed, and the chickens. Damn the chickens. Um, in the morning, maybe my main challenge with, will be if I'm to live my life in fear, my big challenge will be what shall I be afraid of today? Will it be snake or uh, how about bees or what about the food poisoning or maybe it's um, maybe it's a getting run over kind of day today that'll be a good one to be scared of what can you do you can only live your life with some expectation of surviving what on earth would you be doing thinking about something terrible happening to you. Just to end off, I watched um, a top a top motorcycle racer, a racer, an English guy, young English guy with a northern a heavy northern accent and this is a guy that that goes into a race knowing that he's going to be reaching speeds of 200 miles an hour. 200 miles an hour. Imagine that. I, I can't imagine that, actually, because uh, I do about 40k, 40 kilometers an hour, which is um, just a little bit under stopped as far as that man goes. And, But anyway, he was talking about the TT in, in the Isle of Man, which is a notoriously uh, adventurous, exciting race because it's on normal roads. They close the roads, but there's still a lot of danger. Uh, and they mentioned, they interviewed him and they mentioned, said, well, what about when you get to the so-and-so, uh, that notorious spot, the so-and-so, um, I don't know, the uh, the hay market uh, or the mill, the mill wheel, corner or whatever whatever it's called I don't know um, if you're doing what speed are you doing there oh I said yeah duh, yeah that that's uh, that's 170 miles an hour usually and they said don't you think that maybe you could just come tumbling off and be smeared across the road and and he looked at them and said if I'm having thoughts like that why would I be doing what I'm doing in other words, to an extent, it may seem a little bit new age, but we are creating our own uh, reality by looking at how bad things can go wrong. So, 
I'm going to decide that the worst thing that I've got to be afraid of tomorrow is that they'll put too much mayo on my chicken sandwich. Seems a good one to me. It's a foreigner in the Philippines. Be brave.